Hey guys, so today I'm going to give you my ultimate New Zealand travel guide. I'm going to tell you about everything you need to know, transportation, accommodation, food, money, language, people, activities, where to go, all of that stuff. I'm mostly a budget traveler and a backpacker and I can only really speak about what I know, so this video will be helpful if you are in the same boat. But there are also just some good tips for anyone coming to New Zealand. I first came to this country about a year ago. I came just traveling around. I traveled for about two months, the North and the South Island. Uh, part of that time I was solo traveling, part of the time was with friends. I have the working holiday visa so I can be here one year. I left and then I came back in October. And now I've been living here for five months. I've been here through a lot of different climates now and have experienced pretty much most of the country. So I feel like I have a pretty good idea of things to tell you. All right, let's get into it. Places, where should you go? Which island do you wanna to go to? I think it's very dependent on a couple of things. One, how much time you have. Two, what activities you'd most like to do. And three, what the weather is like. The North Island has Auckland and Wellington and a ton of beautiful beaches with clear blue water. There's a lot of good sailing. One of my favorite hikes in New Zealand, the Tongariro Alpine Crossing, it has Hobbiton if you're a fan of Lord of the Rings. It has a lot of cultural stuff. There's a lot of really green lush rolling hills. Those are kind of the things that I think of when I think of the North Island. In general, the North Island is gonna be a little bit warmer than the South Island because it's closer to the equator. The South Island also has some really great beaches, but more impressively, the South Island has huge, amazing mountains, the Southern Alps, Mount Cook, New Zealand's tallest mountain, it's so much hiking. It has Milford Sound, which is absolutely gorgeous. Glaciers, it has the city of Christchurch. Also, some green rolling hills, a lot of sheep, a lot of farms. <laughs> Those you can see on both islands. Both islands are amazing, beautiful, scenic, a lot of different kinds of scenery within each island. So if you have enough time, I'd recommend trying to see both islands, but there is a lot to see. So if you only have two weeks, I might recommend just staying on one island and seeing that island. There is a three hour ferry that goes between the two islands that you can also take cars on or you can fly. I took the ferry and it was absolutely lovely and I saw dolphins and, um, but I have heard some horror stories about the ferry of really rocky uh, water, so just be aware of that. <laughs> okay, so now that you know kind of where you wanna go, transportation, how will you get around? There's a few options. New Zealand is really just a country that you want to see as much as possible. And it really is a road tripping country. It's great for road trips. It's really set up for driving around and exploring. One option obviously is to rent a car. Now, if you're gonna be here for a long time, maybe a month or more, what a lot of people actually do is buy a car or a van, like a camper van that you can sleep in. And then at the end of the time here, you sell it. Even if you don't end up making exactly the same amount of money, it's still so much cheaper than renting a car for that entire time. So that's one thing to look into. When I first came here for the first time, I just took buses between cities and places I wanted to go. The two cheapest companies are called Intercity and Naked Bus. They're pretty comparable in prices, but if I'm going somewhere, I'll look at both websites to make sure I get the best deal. But yeah, they're great. I never had any problems. They're reliable on time. They get you where you need to go. There are also a couple different tour bus companies like Kiwi Experience or Stray. Those are kind of like inclusive packages where you pay a certain amount of money and then you can kind of take them wherever and I don't really know how it works because I haven't done that, but um, some people love it. For me personally, it's not really my cup of tea because I kind of just prefer to be on my own, but if you'd prefer traveling with groups and being around lots of people and maybe a little bit more partying, that kind of thing, then you could look into those buses. I think that they're more expensive, but again, I think you're paying for the convenience and you're paying to have the experience shared with other people and all of that. So. Yeah, you can look into those if you want. If you are driving, just remember, be very careful on the roads here. The roads are very windy. There's a lot of caravans and camper vans and trucks and people going slowly and people trying to pass and most of the roads are just one lane for each direction. So just be very careful, use caution, drive slowly when in doubt, pull over, let people pass you. And a huge important thing, just remember always stay on the left. They drive on the left side of the road here, so stay on the left. The same thing goes though if you're just walking around a city or you're on a hike, on a trail, make sure you always stay on the left hand side of the road because that is the flow of traffic in this country. Money. The currency here is the New Zealand dollar. The majority of places take credit card, so you don't usually need to have cash. 
Though I always recommend carrying a little cash on you just in case you never know. But there are ATMs and banks everywhere. You really don't have to worry. Now a word that you might not be familiar with is EFTPOS, Electronic Funds Transfer Point of Sale. <laughs> so if you're at the counter trying to check out and they'll say EFTPOS, that just means are you paying with a card. I think it technically means debit, but you can also use credit. They also might say PayWave, and that means that if your card says PayWave on it, then you can just like swipe it over the top and you don't have to enter in a PIN or anything. Everyone here uses a PIN number. They don't sign for credit cards. So if you're traveling and you have a signed card, they'll ask you to sign. It might be a little bit confusing at first because sometimes they don't have pens. They're not always prepared for it because it's very uncommon here. And the majority of the time, they're gonna wanna check your signature with the signature on the back of your card. I always just keep it out. I just have it ready for them to look at just so it's easy. All right, accommodation. Hostels are gonna range anywhere from about 25 to 50 New Zealand dollars per night. If you want a private room at a hostel, it's gonna be around $80 a night. If you're gonna be here for a while, I might recommend getting a YHA card. It saves you 10% each time you book. And it has some other perks on activities and discounts as well. When I was here and traveling around, I stayed at a lot of the YHAs. I tend to like the YHAs. Another hostel chain that I like here is called Haka Lodge. Um, they have nice bunks with curtains, so nice for privacy. Some places like Queenstown, which is very busy, the accommodation can book full, so make sure just some places look in advance. I tend to like traveling, just not planning too much ahead of time, but I know in Queenstown, like, the accommodation booked full pretty quickly, so I had to, like, stay at two nights in one place and two nights in another place and, like, two nights in another place just because things were that full. But if you don't mind moving around, I mean. <laughs> Some alternatives to staying at hostels, if you're on a budget, you could do camping. There's a lot of campsites around the country. If you are traveling in a van, then obviously you sleep in the van. And there's also a lot of dock huts around. So dock, the Department of Conservation. There are tons of huts all over the country. Some of them, maybe it's just an hour walk to get to them. Some of them, it's gonna be a much more extensive walk to get there. You'll need some hiking gear and camping gear and all of that. But I think they're really cool. Some of them are absolutely free. Some of them are $5, some of them are $15. They just depend what you're doing, but it's a cool way to be out in the middle of nature with not much around. So food and drink. Everything here is kind of expensive, I would say, compared to other places. But again, you have to realize it's an island and especially anything imported, it's going to cost more because it has to travel a far way to get here. For example, restaurants, might be more expensive than you're used to. But then again, one thing is you don't really tip here. And the price it says on the menu also includes tax. So when you factor in tip and tax that's already included in the price, it's actually not too much more. You just kind of have to think of it that way. If you're from a place like the US, you're used to, if you go to a restaurant, the waiter will come, bring you the bill, and you'll pay at the table. In New Zealand, pretty much all restaurants, whenever you, you're done, you kind of just get up and you walk to the counter at the front of the restaurant and you pay with the person at the counter there. So that's a little bit different. So if you're going out to eat, you don't need to like flag down someone to like get your bill. The service here is a little bit more laid back as well. They're not gonna be so in your face, so just chill, relax, enjoy. If going out to eat is not in your budget, then I definitely just recommend going to grocery stores and making your own food, having picnics. If you stay at hostels, all of the hostels pretty much have kitchens. They're very well stocked. Even some campsites and all of that have kitchens, so it's very easy to make your own food. There are three main grocery store chains. There's Pack and Save, which I think by far is the cheapest. It looks kind of like a warehouse on the inside. There's Countdown, which I would say maybe is like the kind of mid-range grocery store. And then there's New World, which a lot of people would say is the most expensive. Though sometimes I find good deals there as well. It just kind of depends what you're looking for. They're all good, they're all gonna have everything you want. If you're in a smaller town, most likely they will just have a four square. That's just like a small little market. But again, it'll pretty much have everything you want. That's gonna be a little bit more expensive. It's just in a smaller town, it's a smaller market. That's just how it is. If you're traveling on buses or staying in hostels, this is a very common sight, but there will be people with those reusable bags from the supermarket, but the ones that are kind of insulated with a zipper on top. A lot of people will carry their food in those and then take it with them to the hostels they go to and just carry around your food like that. When I was traveling in New Zealand, I always had a bag of muesli or granola 
and maybe some yogurt and bananas and stuff to make sandwiches and just easy things. I would just carry them around with me. Especially if you're just one person, you're not gonna eat everything all at once, so you just carry it with you from place to place and it's fine. Everyone does it. <laughs> the drinking age here is 18, though I will say bring your passport with you if you ever want to buy alcohol or go drinking. I haven't had this problem so much at bars or restaurants, but if I ever tried to buy wine or something from the grocery store, they always ask for my passport. And I usually don't carry around my passport. I just have like my New York driver's license and they do not accept that. If you're international, they will only accept your passport. So if you want to be drinking, just make sure I bring your passport with you. Weather. Now the weather here changes a lot. The saying goes that there are four seasons in a day here. <laughs> and after being here a long time, I can honestly say the weather changes very much. You kind of just have to be prepared for anything. But in general though, New Zealand is in the Southern Hemisphere. So if you're someone who lives in the Northern Hemisphere, all of the seasons are opposite. December through February is summer. Those are also the busiest months here. So if you're planning on coming that time, you might have to book some things more in advance. March through May is autumn, and last year when I was here I saw some gorgeous fall colors that are in the Queensland area, really beautiful. June through August is winter. I actually haven't been here during those months, so I can't speak about that. <laughs> September through November is spring, and you'll see a lot of blooming flowers and trees and really beautiful. So yeah, when you want to come is totally dependent on you and what kind of activities you want to do and what kind of sites you want to see and all of that. I will say if you're someone who wants to do a lot of trekking and hiking, I might recommend coming between October and April because that will be the best weather for that kind of thing. Now again, some of those days are probably not gonna be good. <laughs> you really have to check right before you go because you don't know what the weather will be. But during winter, some of the tracks close. Some of the tracks remain open, but sometimes like there are bridges that go over streams and rivers. And in the winter, they actually take those out so they don't get damaged. So you might still be able to do it, but it's going to be a lot harder. You're going to just need more gear, more expertise, and more skill to do it in the winter. If you aren't that skilled and you don't have all the right gear, I would not recommend going out if the weather is not good. Another thing, there is a slight hole in the ozone layer over this region of the world. So you always have to wear sunscreen if you're gonna be outdoors. You can get burnt very easily and very quickly, even if it's not super hot, just make sure you're wearing sunscreen. Clothing, so now that you know four seasons in one day, the key to clothing here is layers. Just bring lots of layers, things that you can just layer up to get warm and then take off if it gets hot. Essential items, I'd say a waterproof jacket, something that will keep out the rain. It does rain quite often here. Some good hiking boots or some good walking shoes, depending on what activities you're going to do. Bring some clothing to do outdoors activities. Merino wool is really good for this climate here. If you don't have everything when you get here, there's a lot of stores you can go to and buy stuff. If you're on a budget, you should go to the warehouse. It's kind of like a Target or something. Kind of has a little bit of everything. Yeah, pretty much if there's anything you need, just go to a warehouse. They have them in pretty much every city and you'll be good. <laughs> Activities, there is so much to do here, so many outdoors activities, so many things to see. Again, the weather changes so much and some of the activities are very dependent on the weather. So if you can, just be flexible with your plans so you can change them according to the weather. For example, if you wanna do like a hike on a glacier, Obviously, if the weather is bad, they're not gonna do it, but maybe the next day is beautiful. So if you can be a little bit flexible with your plans, that's really good. There's a website called Book Me that's good for coupons and discounted activities. So anything you wanna do, I'd recommend looking there first. So if you do go out to nature, you do some hiking and trekking, just remember to clean up after yourself, don't litter. They have a saying here, be a tidy kiwi. <laughs> so just be a tidy kiwi and just be respectful of nature and the environment. People, the people here are very friendly, super nice. If you need any help, people are always willing to help. I've never felt unsafe here. I've always felt safe and fine. Overall, you don't have to worry too much. If you're a nice person, people will be nice back. It's easy, very easy. Language, the national language is English and the native language is Maori. A lot of the place names are in Maori. So I recommend getting a little bit familiar with the pronunciation of those words. And I have a video that you can watch if you're interested in that. Also, if you're from North America or something, you'll notice that the English here is a little bit different. They have different words and phrases for different things so you'll just discover that as you go along and it's all just kind of the fun of travel. <laughs> 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope that gave you a good idea of traveling in New Zealand. If you have any other questions, put them in the comments below, or if you have some answers, you can help other people out. I have a lot of videos on New Zealand, so check those out if you're interested in any certain places. Subscribe for more. I'll see you next time. Bye.